Hello, and welcome to my thoughts on Season 1, Episodes 1 through 13 of Young Jedi Adventures, the Star Wars show, in case the title didn't tip you off. Before I start, please go into the... After watching, please go into the description box. There's there are there's a link to donate to the SAC After Strike, extremely important strike, and there's also links to videos talking about why it's such an important strike. And yeah, um, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to it, including this season in this video. And let's get into it. Let's start with the shorts. So. Yeah, uh, the shorts are less annoying than the Rebels shorts. Uh, you know, lessons like teamwork, believing in yourself. Nubs learns to enter a mutually beneficial relationship with the bird, rather than treating it as a nuisance. Pirates are basically bullies. Good messages. Don't really have anything else to say about it. So, let's get into the first proper episode. The Young Jedi slash Yoda's mission. So yeah, the episode is in part about learning to accept the help of others, the value of teamwork, and since it's a kid show, the episode is about stopping a bully rather than like defeating a fascist, fascist empire the way Rebels was. Kai doesn't want to choose between getting his lightsaber back or helping Nubs, so he fails to help Nubs. And in order to succeed in this episode, the trio play a game of keep away with the seeds versus the pirates. And this time Kai chooses to help Nubs, except losing the lightsaber, so he's learned his lesson and is rewarded with Yoda's personal training lightsaber. I appreciate that they keep calling it training lightsaber. I, I'm going to be talking about it in the review itself, which I'll be recording after this, but yeah. Everything suggests, everything in the show suggests that they are not wielding actual lightsabers that are just like child's, you know, they're not wielding lightsabers, the kind of lightsabers that Yoda would use, you know, because comparatively size-wise they're about the, the same. They are actually using sabers that can't cut anything, it's just to, so they get the feel of a lightsaber. That brings us to episode two, Nash's race day slash the lost Jedi. That's that's the lost Jedi, not the last Jedi. So I'm not gonna finish that sentence. I think that movie's underrated. That's all I'll say. Anyway, so so yeah, Reyna, the rich girl, bullies Nash, who is comparatively poor. We can't use the force to win, that would be cheating. Good message. There's a Wilhelm scream during the race, I love it. The waterfall is genuinely exciting. I only cheated because I thought you were cheating. This is true of a real, a lot of real life situations as well. And because Nash works with Reyna, they both get out of the mud much, much quicker. I really appreciate Nash is a good winner, not like rubbing it in Reyna's face. And that brings us to the second story of the episode. I appreciate that the kids get permission and don't lie. Evading asteroids is fun and tense in a way that kids can handle. Where's the pilot? It's me. I'm the pilot. It's me. Being brave means facing your fears. Very true and excellent message brings us to the third episode, Get Well Nubs slash The Junk Giant. Nubs is sick, similar to how Sindel is sick in the first Ewok movie, something children can relate to. Add to that, Liz gets distracted. Kai has to get better at listening to Liz. And there's the point made, different people work well together. That really is a gorgeous geyser. We meet Marla, it's communicated that even if something is junk, seems worthless to you, it's still not okay to steal. It could put someone out of business. And it's also worth noting, you know, the pirates are stealing 
because they feel like it, not because they have to. They're, you know, later in the season, I forget, I want to say the character was named Or, with two R's, or maybe Ori. You know, he steals, but only to get by, not because he just feels like it. You know, again, here, pirates are basically bullies. So yeah, we see that the pirates were the ones stealing. They build a junk giant, which gets a droid designation by the end, which, you know, yeah, the, the, the easier to sell toys with. And the bullies are proven to be cowards, as is the case with a lot of real-life bullies. Episode 4. Liz and the Snowy Mountain Rescue slash Attack of the Training Droids. In this episode, Liz and Jam are not quite careful enough. It causes some trouble, so they learn that lesson. Clever to signal with the flute. And the first story of the episode ends in a snowball fight. It's not about being fast. You have to take your time. So they're asked to clean up, but Kai would rather they practice. He programs three droids to handle the chore. I watched the original Fantasia, including the segment The Sorcerer's Apprentice, recently, and I get the sense that someone working on this episode did, too. Cool ending with them managing to win. And I just realized, I meant to say at the top of this, I have gotten, you know, I've read multiple articles. Some say that there are, you know, there's at least one article that says there's 25 episodes total for this season. At first, they just put up seven, and it was a little while before they put up another six I don't know exactly when, or I guess even if, they're going to put up the last eight, twelve, the last twelve episodes, if or when I will do a video at that point. And the, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm doing... Right, uh, the, the review I'll explain in... <clears throat> and... Yes, so that brings us to episode 5. The Jellyfruit Pursuit slash Creature Safari. It did make me chuckle when one of the Jedi says, Sorry in a tough voice. You know, they're, they're posing as, like, tough people. And one of them, I think it's Kai, actually bumps into someone else. And, you know, at first, he's in, in his normal voice, he apologizes. And then I think it's Nash says, Could you Remember, we have to be tough. And he still says sorry because it's ingrained, but he like lowers his voice. This was yeah, made me chuckle. They really hammer home the message: share, not steal. They do the neolib thing of sharing with everyone, even your enemies. Did not need to hear the jingle three times in just one episode. I appreciate the message here that you should not fear what you don't know. You should learn more about it. When Kai and Nubs wear berries, they look somewhat feminine, and it isn't treated as a bad thing, though it is done out of necessity, not that they feel more comfortable. That way, it is still a trans-positive message. And, right, and I just realized I haven't actually said, um, yeah, I think all the episodes so far are great. You know, they're they're not... Made for me, but I can appreciate the. Yeah, they're they're quite well made. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna in these couple of videos where I talk about the show, I'm gonna try to not get distracted by my personal preferences because this was clearly made for children, and that's great. I I think it makes sense to. 
make Star Wars content that's purely for children. And I certainly prefer for them to make separate stuff like this and the Ewok movies to just straight up putting Ewoks in the Jedi, Return of the Jedi. That brings us to episode 6, Squadron slash Forest Defenders. This episode again underlines the importance of patience, even if you're really excited about something. And, yeah, the, the space slug makes an appearance, of course, seen in Empire Strikes Back. And the second story of this episode has a pro-nature message that feels right out of something from the 80s, with good guy characters preventing someone evil from cutting down trees for money. But as long as it's still happening in the real world, I think it does make sense to keep telling the story in fiction. And that brings us to episode 7. The Jedi and the Thief slash The Missing Kibben. Kai has to learn there's more to being a Jedi than fighting pirates. Learns that Zia was also very excitable when she was his age. And... Okay, that can wait. Um, let's see... Yeah, she broke a lot of speeder bikes. Because this is an American production, there is, of course, a handy ramp as they engage in chase. Kai is very surprised to learn that Zia knows Ace. The twisted angle is the scariest looking thing on the show so far. Z teaches Kai people are not purely good or evil. It's more complex than that, which is great for Star Wars kids and Star Wars kids. And then we get to the second story of the episode. Bounty Hunter is looking for someone's pet, has to learn to be nice to people, catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Anson Strung, I have to admit, I, at first I thought, oh, it's like, you know, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I'll, I'll have it momentarily because I know exactly what he appeared in. Danny DeVito. At first I really thought Danny DeVito, but apparently it's John DiMaggio, who is also very talented. And when Anson is struggling with the Kibben because it's just too fast for him, he gets... Let's see. Yeah, the Kibben gets on top of his head. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, he grabs for it, but it's gone. Very much reminded me of that classic dumb duck cartoon where he's in a forest. I forget if it's a rainforest. Wants to enjoy pleasant bird singing, but he keeps being interrupted by a very loud, obnoxious bird that he then struggles to get rid of. Uh, you know, an earlier episode was partially inspired by Fantasia 1940. Really loving these vintage animation references. And the pet owner is very grateful. And I think that's Reyna, the rich girl Nash raced against in an earlier episode. Catching a lost pet is harder than it looks. I don't know, it was pretty hard to watch. I'm kidding. And Anson is now really embracing being nice, buying food and drinks for the Jedi younglings. So there's, you know, character growth. Good to see. Episode 8, The Girl and Her Gargantua slash The Show Must Go On. And this is about how even the scary creatures get scared, in fact, especially them, and how about how even if you're worried people will get mad at you when you admit you made a mistake, it's still important that you admit it, and that's, of course, something very important to, you know, teach children. I really appreciate the episode makes it clear to the audience from the very start that the gargantua is not dangerous. We see Liz, Liz can soothe it. So each time for the rest of the episode when we see someone scared of it, we know that they're, you know, they're mistaken. It's not actually dangerous. It even ends up saving the two sisters, which tells everyone it means them no harm. And the second story is about the importance of friends listening to each other. Even the song is about not going solo. Complain with us, Nash, forever and ever. Yeah, that movie completely ruined. I, I can't hear people saying come play with us and not think that. Uh, but I'm really glad I watched it. And yeah, that brings us to episode 9. The Princess and the Jedi slash Kai's Bad Day. So yeah, this royal barely ever gets to do anything by herself. People are always doing things for her. And because this is set in the Star Wars universe, people underestimate the princess. We lost lateral controls. 
we are unable to make a lateral move. I mean, it wouldn't change anything anyway. Let's see. People can surprise you. Yeah, honestly, why wouldn't you let this privileged young person have complete control of a spaceship? Next, you'll be telling me you don't want her to have compl complete control of Twitter. I'm sorry, X, either. I'm joking. Obviously, there's almost nothing. They have almost nothing in common. It's just spaceship, you know, let, letting a young privileged person have com control of spaceships. That's, yeah. And that's it for the first story of this episode. So, my favorite thing about this show is undoubtedly that a recent Star Wars story didn't feel the need to include Tatooine. Now, time for the second story. Tatooine. Wonderful. I'm kidding. It's fine. That is one bad day. Excellent message that you solve it by trying to focus on something positive. Again, something very important to teach kids. I've never seen Jawas be intimidating before, but yeah. They're the size of the little children characters, so if there's enough of them, and only a few kids, that'll do it. And episode 10, Visitor's Day slash The Growing Green Danger. Liz has to learn it's okay to ask for help. Another game of keep away. Do something! I mean, that sure is something. Second story of the episode, I must have lost track of time, aka American Media Teacher Syndrome. You observed the plant and determined what it needed. How, he, how could he forget? This is at least the third time you say it in this one episode. Again, I'm playing up. I'm, I'm not actually frustrated by these. Episode 11, The Gangles Slash Bad Eggs. So yeah, Ori doesn't have money for food and thus has to resort to stealing happens in real life and people like that deserve our empathy and the town stands up to the bullies that the game represent this creature sure likes sap let's put on all the hallmark movies we can you've got to come down I am calm and episode 12 off the rails slash the thieves of Tharnica the Jedi are fighting homelessness great Maybe it was thought to be too early to tell the kids that in real life homelessness is not purely about whether or not there are buildings that the homeless could stay in. It's also the profit motive that poisons it, but... On the other hand, maybe it's Disney not being willing to go the, the whole way in favor. You know, they, they certainly follow the profit motive. What are you doing? This is no time for sitting, and I won't stand for it. We learn there's more to Tabor than we knew. And the second story of the episode features a Gungan, but at least the racism in the depiction is much less aggressive than in the prequel movies. One of the messages is that the people, uh, the, the past of your people is worth far more than money. I like it. And that brings us to the last episode that has so far been released. Episode 13, Tree Troubles slash Big Brother's Bounty. So, yeah, Raxlow is at it again. Great to see more pro-nature message. Right, uh, I can't claim that I didn't chuckle when Nash was like, well, it doesn't seem shaky now, and then, like, knocks on it, and then it shakes. It's like, what did I do? Just It's a, it's a classic gag. And Ragslow says, I'll be fine, I only care about, you know, and I only care about profits. Like, it's, it's, yeah, 100%, the, you know, I, I realize I rephrased that slightly, but that is, that's what he's expressing, you know. And, yeah, they point out about balance in nature. And then we get to the second story which I believe is also the title of House 2, the horror comedy sequel. We meet uh, Senna Strung, the sister of Anson Strung. And there are a lot of characters in American media that have some masculine traits and some feminine traits. This is... I, I'm not saying this is the only one, 
but recently we've seen that it's not always depicted as being negative for for a while like there's a lot of 80s like sitcoms and such where it would be treated as a negative like you know you can't you you have to be either you know you if you're assigned male at birth you have to be masculine if you're assigned female at birth you have to be feminine never the twain shall meet and here it's actually like at first I thought oh they're gonna make jokes because she looks just like Anson but she's somewhat feminine but they don't actually like the thing with her is not the the fact that sometimes she's feminine sometimes she's masculine that's just who she is you know and nobody's actually bothered by that like they're bothered when she's like intimidating people that's treated as bad so so yeah you know I like to think that some non-binaries felt really seen here you know as well as some trans and honestly some cis and yeah one of the messages is everyone messes up sometimes so Anson is overconfident Senna is not quite confident enough. I feel like out there somewhere there is a Goldilocks strung. And yeah, the kind of funny when when the the I, ah crap, I forget the the name of the creature, but the thing is you know, it's right behind Anson, but he can't yeah, he he's not realized it yet. You know, and and the you know, I th I think it might be sent someone like points and says the the what was it Baldy Lax and he said yeah the Baldy that's what I'm looking for just just yeah and then eventually it's right back me isn't it and yeah you know he got so caught up in his work he forgot about his family which yeah a lot of kids media has that message and it is you know again as long as it keeps happening it's still although you know it is rich for Disney to say ah oh, you know don't worry that much about work well you're you know you're part of this capitalist machine that forces them to work extremely hard so just yeah you know the message instead of being like you shouldn't forget about your family it could be we should treat workers better so they have time for their family but, but yeah, you know, Senna points out, you know, she has now learned that mistakes are chances to get better. And yeah, love to see it. I don't really have much else to... Right, there were a couple of voice cast... Raxlow is played by Haley Joel Osment. Yeah, Sixth Sense... AI artificial intelligence paid forward that Haley Joel Osmond Gary Anthony Vill Williams voices Zephyr I I am never ever going to complain about Gary Anthony Williams voicing Star Wars that's just, he's he's perfect for it and I think that is more oh right right um there was one more very cool that Nassim Pedrad voices Zia. Gotta say, this is very unlike, you know, I've, other than this, the only thing I've seen that she's in is Scream Queens. So, yeah, this is quite, quite different, but she does really well in both. Oh, she's in the Aladdin remake. I suppose it's possible that at some point I will watch that. I'm really not intending to do a video on it, though. And that is it. Yeah. Um, so, let me know in the comments what was your, you know, do you have a favorite episode? Did, you know, how, how do you feel about something so child oriented as part of Star Wars although I'm not sure it's been confirmed to be canon you know y Yoda is there there's a couple of things that you know 
Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for this one. So, may the force be with you.